Um, so I think the one main thing for a lot of students coming in is that they want to just do dance. Right. Um, and for us, it's not just about um, building them into dancers, but first building them into leaders. Yes. Um, and that starts from the moment that they walk into the door. Um, it's not you know after a certain amount of time. It's not after a certain you know skill level. It's recognizing that the moment that you walk in, you have an effect on everybody else and that you have an impact on your community. Um, so having them recognize that from the, the onset. And um, in terms of the, the dance itself, it's based off of dance heuristics, which is the science for the way in which we learn dance. Mm -hmm. um, so we're studying how the brain processes movement and then how that, in knowing that, that can help us have clearer movement, um, you know, better execution in our choreography. That's fabulous. I've never heard that anywhere else. So you guys are very unique, which you know already. <laughs> um, Yasmin, tell yes. me about some of the repertory that you guys have within the repertory company. Do you have any performances that are coming up? How does that all work within the Hip Hop Dance Conservatory? Well, we actually do have a uh, performance coming up. Um, in August, um, our summer repertory exhibition. Um, during the summer, each summer we have a summer intensive where students come um, from all over the world and take our intensive. It's our annual or our curriculum for the entire year truncated into the two months. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds intense. <laughs> sounds intense. And it ends with a, um, a culminating performance. Um, so this year, our feature piece is going to be the dating game. Um, this is actually a piece that we mounted back in 2007, so yes. we're remounting it. Um, I don't think I've seen yeah. that one. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah haven't no, we haven't done one. it since, no. since then. Yeah, um, it's a parody about uh, just bringing to light, uh, you know, relationships and dating, and you know, the games that we tend to play in order to, you know, uh, find a, a mate, or you know, like all the different things, the different rules, like you have to, you know do this in order to get a man, or you know, the different right. things like that. Um, so yeah, that will be our, our feature piece for the summer exhibition. That's wonderful. So yeah. a lot of your pieces, if not all of them, you know, they tell a story. They don't just come from out of nowhere, and right. people are just doing some <laughs> cool moves, maybe like <laughs> a little bit of this. Um, it, it tells a story, mm -hmm. and, and it's almost like going to see like a Broadway show or something like that. You really get pulled into mm -hmm. the characters and what the story is all about. Why is it important for you guys to tell stories through Hip-hop? Well, you know, um, in terms of just art in general, it's important to actually use the art to convey a certain message mm -hmm. um, in order to get the attention, or once you have the attention of the audience, you know, what are you trying to say? Um, you know, yes, you want to entertain them or, you know, um, give them something to see, but it's also about, you know, educating the, the general public, um, and we do that through our pieces. Um, so this is, again, like talking about relationships and what we do in relationships and how things may not always be the most productive thing mm -hmm. in a relationship, in a healthy relationship. Um, so using the art to inform the public as opposed to just entertaining the public. I love that. And Safi, you're all about people walking away from your performances, <laughs> making them think, Walking out like, okay, I need, I need about a couple weeks to process <laughs> what just happened. No, really, like, you know, you really, it's thought-provoking choreography or it's a thought-provoking experience. It's not just, oh, they did some cool head spins and then that dude did a freeze on the floor and then I don't remember what else happened, <laughs> but it was cool, you know. So th this is all coming from your inner creative juices. Um, why is it important for you to, to kind of expand the horizon for people when it, when it comes to hip-hop dance and how they think about hip-hop dance? Why is that important to you? Um, well, I think it, everything kind of starts from wanting people to experience more than what they do currently mm -hmm. uh, and understanding that you know this is already built into you know the construct of our art our art has always told stories right. you know we've always been telling stories um, even from you know the early 80s we were always telling stories mm -hmm. um, so it's not really this is not something that's new um, what has happened is the entertainment industry has taken and misappropriated our art form and turned it into more so you know a <laughs> make, make it nice, make it nice. <laughs> sugar it no, up, no. add some sugar because I know how you get. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's turned it into um, more entertainment mm -hmm. than it is, you know, thought provoking. And, you know, there are aspects of the art, you know, like theme, motif, um, and things that can be, you know, pulled together to actually create something more than just, you know, 
random movement to random songs, mm -hmm. which is kind of what it's turned into. Um, but, you know, I mean, there have been people that have been doing this, you know, way before, you know, we even started doing these things. You know, you have, you know, um, you have people out there that have been doing, you know, pieces um, here and there and scattered for like the longest. Um, we're just the ones that came along and started to do this, you know, straightforward and do it consistently right. um, and making sure that people understand that that's out there. You know, yeah. so you have groups like Full Circle, um, you know, you had Rocksteady Crew doing that as well. You had, oh man, who else? Um, um, what was it? Oh. I know. Rhythm, rhythm, techni rhythm, rhythm technicians, technicians. Yes, yeah. Yes. Like, I mean, there, there's a lot of people who were doing these type of shows mm -hmm. before we did, right. um, mm -hmm. and now what we're doing is we just do this consistently and making sure that people know that there's more that can be done with the art. You Absolutely. Know, the same way the classical community does. Yeah, and you guys create more of like an all-around kind of theatrical experience too. It forces you to learn mm -hmm. because you're watching it and you can see clearly the themes and like you said, the motif that's in it. And it's like, oh wow, I see what they're talking about. They're addressing this stereotype or they're addressing yes. this social mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. So it makes you think, but at the same time, there are costumes and props and sets and you know, so you get the full theatrical experience, but mm -hmm. it's hip hop and people aren't used to that. So yes. Yvonne, for you, from the education perspective, mm -hmm. when you have these you know youngsters coming in and all they've seen <coughs> about hip hop is maybe what they did at their local dance studio, which is God mm -hmm. knows what nowadays um, or oh, you know God. whatever they see on television <laughs> where yeah. do you kind of bring in that that level where they can get a full understanding of what hip-hop is all about the history you know mm -hmm. the present and what you guys are trying to push towards for the future generations mm -hmm. um, well I think obviously what kind of makes our conservatory what it is is the contextual classes is the academic portion mm -hmm. um, so not just having the dance be a part of the education but also the theoretical classes as well um, and we pair a lot of the theory with practical application in the dance room um, so we have classes like elements of repertory production where they learn about stage they learn mm -hmm. about how to analyze other performances and they learn about how um, repertory companies in the past did it that were not um, hip hop dance because they are our template in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so they learn about you know people like American Ballet Theater or New York City Ballet and how they had kind of started up in their repertory. Um, and then in terms of the dancing itself, um, going further than just learning the movement properties and the movement qualities of all the elements of our art form but also you know acting for dancers, um, character development. Yes. how to create stories for your characters so that you're on stage not as yourself um, just being a dancer but you're on stage as your character contributing to the whole of the work. I so. love it. This is why people need to be at the Hip Hop Dance Conservatory <laughs> because you're not getting this anywhere else. And you, got, you mentioned ABT and there are other mm -hmm. modern ballet dance companies mm -hmm. who do these types of things. If you go to college you may get these types of elements within your education but mm -hmm. if you're a hip hop dancer there's and you nowhere. go to take a class at who knows what John Doe, you know, dance studio, mm -hmm. you're not getting any of this. They're going to show you some moves that they saw on YouTube, right. and that's what you're going to walk away with, and that's it. But, right. you know, you're, you're doing so much more than that. And I guess I should ask you, Safi, what are some of the misconceptions about hip-hop dance mm -hmm. and hip-hop dancers that you try to address and, and teach and educate your students about at the Hip-Hop Dance Conservatory? Well, I think one of the first conflations that happens is, you know, again, kind of you, went, you mentioned it earlier, which is what they see on television mm -hmm. or what they saw at their dance studio and then what they get when they come here. You know, you know like we have, we, we have, you know, they start to meet people, you know, from the, from the actual hip hop dance community mm -hmm. and then they're kind of confused because, you know, it's like, well, wait a second, I thought what I was doing, you know, was, was hip hop. Right. Um, and they start to recognize, no, there are elements, you know. Um, so when you start to kind of get into those elements and start to see, you know, the wide diaspora that exists, and I mean, you can, you can do this for, you know, decades, you know, and mm -hmm. still not know everything, mm -hmm. you know, and there's still things that you learn, you know, I mean, been doing this, you know, years, mm -hmm. and there's still <laughs> so much more, you know, that, you know, you know, that, I learn and I always pass on to them and it's you know it's a constant level of development and so you know one of the greatest misconceptions that we always come in contact with when meeting others is the fact that they think that oh yeah hip hop dance that's like you know it's like 6 years old right um, oh god <laughs> <laughs> well, you know um, and you know so that's the first you know misconception yeah. that we have to combat you know, recognizing that, you know, this is a deep and very rich history mm -hmm. that's over 40 years old. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of our, you know, originators and OGs, like, they're all, you know, in their late 40s, early 50s. 50s right. You yeah. know, so this is, you know, this is expansive, and there's a wellspring of knowledge that's out there mm -hmm. um, that's not just with us. There's so many other people who are willing and ready and able to share knowledge across multiple platforms, but no one knows about their existence. Right. Um, and that's mainly because what we're getting thrown on MTV or other, you know, shows is, okay, you know, dance, right. flashy, smoke, <laughs> round stage, um, yes. but <laughs> at no time are we paying homage to those who created those art forms. Mm. You know, when do we start to pay homage to them? Why are we paying homage to the, you know, to the music artists right. when they are not the ones that created the dance? No, right. So why not, you know, focus on these guys who are all alive, by the way, mm -hmm. why not focus in on them? And how about you have, you know, a show that's dedicated, you know, to Rocksteady Crew? Why don't you have a mm. show that's dedicated to Dynamic Rockers? Why don't you have a show that's dedicated to, you know, um, Granny and the Robotroids? You know, why don't you have a show, you know, I mean, there's a lit, you know, you can go on and on of all these people that you could be dedicating your show to and teaching these kids that are coming mm. something like more, you know, right. substantial. Right, educating them more than just entertaining them. Right. Because right. I feel like if you have the attention of so many millions of <laughs> viewers, viewers yeah. that are mostly young people, that's a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. So why take that opportunity and just be like, oh, okay, let's just put on a show. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, you really, you missed the whole point. You know, it's, it's a shame to me, but I want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show. It was my pleasure, <laughs> as always. I love these guys, I love them. <laughs> um, we can learn more about you at hdcny.org. Yes. Yes. They're also very active on Facebook, so we if are. you want to go on Facebook and join their 90 million fans, <laughs> you're welcome to do so. <laughs> but thank you so much, Yasmin, thank Safi, you. and Yvonne. And thank right you. now we're going to show one of your videos, oh, wow. um, the H Plus Community Class. Mm -hmm. So uh, check that out. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. You make me want to.
Welcome back to Insight New York City Dance with me, your host, Ashani Mfuko. I'm here in the studio now with one of the most fabulous health coaches <laughs> in New York City. Yes, her name is Joni Johnson. She's here with me. Hello, Joni. Hello, thank you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Joni was on my radio show also last year. Last year. Yeah, and we talked about a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of good pointers from you, and I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm good. feeling I'm feeling clean. So you're eating um, healthy. I'm eating healthy. Good. I'm doing good. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about some green juices today. This mm -hmm. is like the hottest fad. I'm reading about it on blogs. I'm seeing it on television everywhere. It what is. is the big deal with green juices? What's the big deal? What's to talk about? Well, there's always gonna be a fad. You know, the 80s was no fats. The 90s was no carbs. Mm -hmm. And it seems like now it's detoxing and juicing and just remember that it's a fad. Right. It's, it's gonna go eventually, but there's no, there's never any harm in getting more fruits and vegetables into your diet. Nothing wrong with that? No, nothing so at tell all. So me, tell me what is the deal with green juices? What should we be using to put into the green juice? How do you make it taste good? Because I've had some green juices, girlfriend. I know. They were healthy, they were clean, <laughs> they were organic, and they were nasty. So we don't want that. Tell me how I right. can make a delicious green well, juice. Well, this is an easy one that you can make at home. You don't need to buy an expensive juicer. Okay. I actually recommend that you do a blender over a juicer because oh. when you blend the ingredients together, you're going to get the complete fruit and vegetable. When you juice it, you're taking out the good stuff, like the, the, skins, the skin and the fiber yeah. and the, the minerals that are in the fiber. So when you have the complete fruit and vegetable, you're gonna get the optimal benefits out of, out of what you're, you're drinking. Okay, so cool. what do we have here? Really simple. This is your powerhouse right here. Spinach, kale, the greener the meaner. You, you just, you wanna put the greenest, healthiest looking greens <laughs> into your juice okay. possible. And don't skimp on them. You know, this is the, the main ingredient in your juice. Okay, good. And um, you know, that, that's why the craze is, because your, green, your greens are full of um, immunity boosters. Mm -hmm. And you know, as soon as I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit sick, I load up on kale or spinach and, really? and a lot of water, and I try to kick it out of me that way instead yeah. of you know, down in the medicine. Oh, yeah. Uh, parsley. Parsley is a diuretic and it's going to help clean out your kidneys. So it's going to oh. help flush things through your system. We like clean kidneys. Clean kidneys we do. Like we we like do, this. yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to use too much of this because the taste could be really strong. Okay. So maybe just a quarter of what's, of what's in this bowl right here. Okay. All right. Then some of our other ingredients that mm. we're going to use. We are going to use half of the juice of a lime mm -hmm. and half of the juice of a lemon. And in addition to just giving it a flavor punch, you're going to add in your vitamin C. Yes, so. we need vitamin C. Yes. And I like to drink lemon water. Is lemon water good it's for great. you? That's yeah. good for you too. It's great. Okay. You're not adding sugar to the lemon water. No, it's okay. just water. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. And if I was, I wouldn't tell you right now on the show. But exactly. anyway, no, exactly. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then um, we're going to add in an apple. Uh, just depending on the size of the juice that you're making, I never, ever measure out ingredients. I'm, a, I'm terrible. One of those people. I'm terrible okay. at baking. I just I can't be bothered. I don't have time. Right. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Exactly. And I just test <laughs> and we'll see what comes out. And if right. it tastes good, I'll do it again. And if not, don't don't do it. Yeah. So anywhere from half of an apple or, or a whole apple. Okay. Just depending on the amount of sweetness that you want. So this is your I natural like sugar. I, I like sweet. So. And you also want to go for more vegetables than fruits because even though it's a natural sugar, it's still sugar. Right. And you don't want to overload your system. So anywhere from half to a full apple. Mm -hmm. Add in another vegetable, some cucumber. It's good with, for the fiber. Um, lots of vitamin K. Vitamin K is going to help you with um, strengthening your bones. It helps you know reduce the risk of osteoporosis, arthritis. Yes, which dancers. Is a threat this is for important. dancers. Very, yeah, very important for us. Absolutely. And then just a little bit of ginger. So I would maybe take. You know, you can buy these in, in any size at the, the grocery store, but maybe just take no more than this. Really? Is it yeah. that powerful? It's so powerful. Yeah. If you get too much ginger in your juice, you're not, it's, it's maybe one of those disgusting juices that maybe you... Maybe that was the problem. Maybe, yeah. Because it was like... It's really, mm. it almost feels a little spicy in your mouth. Oh, you've got, I, don't, I don't eat that. Yeah, no. yeah. I want so. fresh and sweet and <laughs> yummy. That's what we're going for. Right, and the ginger is an anti-inflammatory. So that's going to be important for dancers as well because yeah. we're working our muscles really hard. You are always at a risk for inflammation. Inflammation causes disease. So get the ginger in there and it's going to help reduce the um, inflam inflammatory. So after the show, you're going to make one for me. But I want to <laughs> know, you have all of these fresh ingredients here, mm -hmm. but you can buy green juice anywhere. 
They're at like every your CVS, your pharmacies, everywhere they have them. Yes. Is it better to just buy it? Or are you going to still get the freshness, or is it better to just use your you're, own ingredients? You're not going to get the freshness. And if you're buying it in powder form or something that's pre-made, pre-mixed, it's been sitting on a shelf. Um, you know, it's going to be full of chemicals, preservatives, because you know you don't have to put anything in this. You're going to drink it right away. Right and you know exactly what's gone into it. When you get the, the juices from the store, you don't know what they've had to put into it to preserve it so they can ship it and then yeah. sell it. And with the powder form, you know, that, that's really, really processed. So I always say eat real food. Right. You know, it's, it's going to be the best thing for you. So for your clients who are not dancers, because you're a health coach, you work with dancers yeah. and athletes and non you know, performing people. Uh, this may be intimidating to them because they're like, I'm drinking some spinach and parsley and cucumbers and what are we doing, really? I'm not sick, why do I need to drink this? But how do you kind of like push them in the direction, just give it a try, it might, you know, you might like it. Right, right. It can be intimidating. Um, that's, that's why I recommend using the blender mm -hmm. and stick with ingredients that you know. And you can mix up your fruits. You can, you know, you could add a pear instead of an apple if you prefer pears. You know, throw some strawberries in or blueberries. Um, if you don't like spinach, go with kale or try mm -hmm. another leafy green that you do like. And just try to simplify it. It doesn't have